To salt or not to salt? A debate dating back over 100 years. Early research beginning before the 1900s that found benefits for hypertensive patients by restricting salt intake were largely based on uncontrolled case reports. Well-designed and controlled studies began to cast doubt on this narrative, showing a benefit of salt reduction only in approximately 25% of hypertensive individuals. The majority of published data of the early 1900s really showed no efficacy in treating hypertension with a low-sodium diet, and most clinicians did not stand by a low-salt diet and found they led to serious adverse events. Nonetheless, the investigation continued. By 1948, the first medical report of adverse cardiovascular effects of sodium intake was published. This resulted in details of sodium restriction management in both renal failure and hypertensive crisis. In 1970, the National Academy of Sciences stated that evidence linking salt to hypertension is inconclusive. Despite lack of evidence, the U.S. federal agencies embraced a recommendation of salt reduction. The idea that a large intake of salt is harmful became the popular opinion. The food industry saw a window of opportunity for profit by marketing low-sodium products that are applicable to a wide range of the population. Since in theory, anyone could eventually develop hypertension from high sodium intake and it was implicated as part of a treatment plan for hypertensive patients, the food industry had struck a gold mine. In 2010 alone, the USA launched more low sodium or no sodium products than any other country globally. But other countries are no strangers to profiting from the thriving market of low sodium products either. In terms of value, globally the market for sodium reduction ingredients was approximately 1.24 billion by 2020. This shaped new dietary trends. Currently guidelines from the American Heart Association suggest keeping sodium intake ideally at 1.5 grams per day or below and the current average intake is 3.4 to 3.8 grams per day. These recommendations of less than 1.5 grams per day have not been met by a single country. In 2011, the largest systematic review of sodium intake in cardiovascular disease was done. They included 167 studies and over 10,000 patients and failed to confirm generalized benefits of low sodium intake on blood pressure. Most recently in 2018, a large Hamilton, Ontario-based study called PURE finds that only sodium intake greater than 5 grams per day was associated with cardiovascular disease and stroke in some communities. Today we will be speaking with Dr. Andrew Mente, an investigator from Population Health Research Institute at McMaster University, who is the leading author in publishing some of these salt findings in PURE. First of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Um, yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about PURE. Uh, PURE is a large international prospective cohort study uh, spanning five continents of the world. So that's very uh, unique about PURE in that uh, all previous prospective cohort studies typically focus on one geographic region or, or even more commonly on one country. Whereas PURE covers a broad range of diets and, uh, and sodium intake because it's global, spanning five continents. So only Australia and Antarctica, Antarctica are not included. And so because it is large and it is broad, we capture a, a wide range of sodium intake from very low levels to very high levels and with big numbers. And this is important because, especially when dealing with an essential nutrient, which sodium is, in that we can capture not just whether there is a relationship between sodium and health outcomes, but also the shape of the relationship. What Pure has been able to ascertain is that uh, there is a U-shaped relationship between intake and health outcomes. That is heart attack strokes and cardiovascular events and mortality, where if you go above approximately five grams of sodium per day, there's an increased risk. But also going at too low, below three grams per day of sodium, you get an increased risk. So the sweet spot appears to be between three to five grams of sodium per day. Now that is uh, higher than the current recommendation. As for having an impact on the guidelines with our, our work and other work, uh, it's a very slow process because um, so low sodium recommendations go back decades. And so whenever there's new science to question current beliefs and, and conventional thinking, it takes a long time for that to be, um, to, to result in policy change. And that's true for every area of science. And especially for something that has been longstanding dogma. Now, 
uh, having said that, there are uh, signs that it is starting to happen. So for example, in the recent Global Burden of Disease paper that came out uh, a couple of years ago, the uh, cutoff that they use to classify uh, low sodium intake versus high sodium intake was three grams per day of sodium. That's higher than what's been used in the past, uh, you know, 2.3 grams or two, or two grams. So we could see, you're starting to see some change in thinking where the, that cutoff of low sodium is starting to creep up in some, of her, some very influential papers. They recommend uh, a incredibly low amount, 1.5 grams per day, uh, and, um, and, and uh, no higher than 2.3 grams per day. Yeah. So these are very low sodium targets, very, very difficult for most people to sustain in the long term. Clinical trials have shown that um, no clinical trial has been able to sustain a, a low sodium intake at that level for beyond six months, despite rigorous interventions to try to get people to consume low amounts of sodium for that long. So it's just not practical and, and it just people just cannot consume that. What is needed is a large randomized controlled trial. Whether such a trial can be done is a whole different matter. Now that said, there are, uh, I believe, three trials that are currently ongoing. Uh, but they are in uh, largely in a uh, sick population, that is the uh, heart failure patients. I think one is in people with chronic kidney disease. And so we await, we'll await the results of those trials and see what the results are. If, first of all, if they were able to sustain low sodium intake and, and what, the, of course, the effects are as far as efficacy and safety are concerned. Thank you, Dr. Mente, for taking the time to discuss with us the new SALT and cardiovascular disease research. We hope this discussion prompts you to reconsider your low sodium products. And when you're cooking, just add salt. <laughs>